Distal radius fractures are commonly displaced or angulated. If they are allowed to heal in such a position, it may result in deformity and partial loss of function. Pulling the fragments back into alignment is commonly referred to as setting the bone. The procedure is more technically known as a reduction. A closed reduction is when the fracture is reduced without making an incision and exposing the broken bone. The distal radius is generally considered to be well aligned based on certain parameters measured with x-rays. If the fragment is tilted too far forward, it is known as volar angulation. If it is tilted too far backward, it is known as dorsal angulation, which is very common. If it is tilted too far to the side, there may be loss of radial inclination. Sometimes the fracture is shortened, resulting in shortening of the arm. Sometimes the fracture is displaced enough that the bone does not have a chance to heal correctly. If there is displacement or step off along the joint surface, it may result in early wear and tear in the joint which will cause arthritis and chronic pain. In these situations, a reduction should be performed. A closed reduction is painful and some form of anesthesia should be provided. This may be done with sedation. It may also be done with a hematoma block. This is when a local anesthetic, such as lidocaine, is injected directly into the fracture hematoma, numbing the painful area. Sometimes the wrist will not relax enough to perform the reduction, even when the patient is sedated. If this is the case, sustained traction across the fracture site may help to fatigue the muscles and the wrist will relax. The reduction itself is performed by pulling the wrist in traction. Force is then applied to push the fragment back into place. It is often necessary to accentuate the fracture while applying traction to free the fragment before pushing it into place. Once the fracture is well aligned, a cast or splint must be applied to hold it in alignment. A sugar tong splint is a popular choice because it can be molded to hold the fracture in alignment, prevents pronation and supination of the forearm, and allows for swelling. The cast or splint is applied using three-point molding. One hand is applied at the fracture site, another distal to the fracture site on the opposite side of the wrist, and an assistance hand is applied at the elbow. This molds the cast or splint in such a way as to prevent the fracture from moving back out of alignment. When the cast or splint has been applied, x-rays should be obtained to confirm that the fracture is well aligned.